night. Counter-attack. Pakistan goes on the defense and attacks targets in Iran. China is moving fast to calm the nerves of the two nuclear nations. However, Pakistan responds with force, recalling its ambassador while barring Iran's ambassador to Pakistan from re-entering the South Asian nation. Not so clean. In a first for Singapore, its transport minister resigns after allegations of corruption were brought against him. The minister becomes Singapore's first sitting minister to be charged with a criminal offence in the city nation's 60-year history. Cult killing A Kenyan preacher is charged with murder, cruelty, child torture and other crimes in the deaths of 429 people in a story that has shaken the African continent. Over 200 are deemed to be children. And flying ramen A man in Berlin buys a red bucket. And you won't believe what he did with it. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Alaverna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here's Mahish Jani. A very good evening to all. Thank you very much for making us a part of your evening. There is a lot to get through tonight, so let's get right to it. We begin uh, in the region tonight as Pakistan has launched retaliatory missile strikes into Iran, reportedly killing nine people uh, so far after Iran carried out strikes in Pakistan late on Tuesday. Pakistan said that its strikes had hit terrorist hideouts in Iran's Sistan, Balochistan province. Iran state TV said that three women and four children were killed in the attacks. Meanwhile, a spokeswoman for Pakistan Foreign Ministry said that after Iran violated its airspace, Pakistan has recalled its, its ambassador to Iran and the Iranian ambassador to Pakistan, currently visiting Iran, will not be allowed to return to Islamabad. The reciprocal airstrikes come as tensions in the Middle East are high with several overlapping crises. Israel is fighting Palestine group Hamas in Gaza and exchanging fire with Iran-backed Hezbollah in Lebanon. Iran-backed groups in Iraq and Syria are targeting U.S. forces and the U.S. and U.K. have struck the Iran-backed Houthis in Yemen who have been attacking shipping. Pakistan and Iran have long accused each other of harboring militant groups that carry out attacks from regions along their shared border. Early today, Pakistan's foreign ministry confirmed its strikes, which Iranian media said took place around the city of Sarawak. Pakistan said it had acted in light of credible intelligence of impending large-scale terrorist activities and said a number of terrorists were killed. Meanwhile, China says they are willing to play a constructive role to ease Iran-Pakistan tensions and to ensure that the region returns to its peace. Now, an explosion at a firework factory in central Thailand killed about 20 people yesterday, according to provincial officials. Though the devastation at the scene has made the death toll uncertain, the information officer of the Supanburi province government initially announced that 23 people had been killed in the mid-afternoon blast, but by late last night, revised it to uh, 19 dead and 3 missing. The National Department of Disaster Prevention and Mitigation's earlier preliminary figure had been at least least 20 people killed. Supanburi is about 95 kilometers northwest of Bangkok in the heart of Thailand's central rice growing region. Well, there's surprising news regarding corruption coming out from Singapore tonight. Uh, Singapore's Transport Minister S. Eswaran resigned after being charged with corruption. Earlier today, the Prime Minister's office confirmed this historic development for a city state that prides itself on having a squeaky clean government. The charges against Ishwaran are part of the biggest corruption probe to engulf Singapore's ruling People's Action Party in decades. The scandal, which also ensnared a hotel tycoon best known for bringing the Formula One Grand Prix to the city, was one of in a series of controversies for the government in the past year that sent shock bears through the country. Ishwaran is the country's first sitting minister to be charged with criminal offence. Chief Prosecutor Tan Kia Feng said in court today that Ishwaran, whose political career spanned nearly 30 years, faces 27 charges, including corruption and obstructing justice. According to charge sheets, these include allegations that he was gifted by Malaysian billionaire Ong Beng Sin more than 160,000 Singapore dollars in bribes in exchange for advancing his business interests. Those gifts allegedly included business class flights, luxury hotel stays, tickets to the Grand Prix, English Premier League and West End Musical. Well, to the UK now, medical surgery is putting two senior royals on the bench. 
In the early hours of this morning, news from the palace states that Princess Catherine will be in hospital for significant abdominal surgery and will be out of action till Easter. Then just 90 minutes later, another one, King Charles, shared that he would undergo a prostate operation. Serious health concerns within the royal family. In a surprising announcement today, Kensington Palace says Kate, Princess of Wales, is recovering from a successful planned abdominal surgery. They don't say why, only that the 42-year-old was admitted to the London Clinic Tuesday and will likely remain in the hospital for 10 to 14 days, a rare, lengthy stay. A source at Kensington Palace confirms her condition is non-cancerous, providing no additional details. The palace says she'll cancel all public appearances until after Easter, her husband, the future king, also taking a time out. And also today, in a surprise second statement, Buckingham Palace announced 75-year-old King Charles will have a procedure next week for an enlarged prostate like thousands of other men, the palace notes. His Majesty's condition is benign, the statement says, calling it a corrective procedure. Well, let's get the latest on that story. And for that, let's cross over to Clifford Pereira, standing by in Yorkshire with the details on that story. Clifford. Mahesh, the Royal Palace continues to maintain the fact that King Charles' procedure is a very routine one and that he would be up and about in no time. As mentioned earlier, it was a puzzling as to why King Charles wanted to make this procedure known to the public. But people here see it as positive one where King Charles is hoping to inspire people his age to get his procedure, which will help many. Meanwhile, the other member of royal family who is in the hospital is the Princess of Wales. Catherine is said to be doing well. The media was only told that she was having abdominal surgery. Rumors about the possible cancer-related procedure were mentioned in tabloid media here in the UK, but the palace soon dispelled those rumors. No further details of the princess's private medical information were given. Both the king and the princess is expected to return to the royal household soon. Mahesh. Indeed, uh, Clifford Pereira, other than there a world news special correspondent reporting from Yorkshire in the UK. Thank you very much. Well, what's the latest uh, with regard to Donald J. Trump? That story coming right up. Let's take a short commercial break. In Welcome back everyone to World News. Now, President Donald Trump, high on victory from Iowa, is now pleading his case to voters in New Hampshire while ripping into the credentials of his rival, Nikki Haley. The former president hopes to close the book on his nomination in New Hampshire by gaining a clean sweep to victory, signaling to everyone else that he is ultimately the Republican nomination. Tonight, former President Trump returning to a familiar campaign refrain, weaponizing race, gender, and xenophobia against his political opponents. Nikki Haley is a disaster. Trump posting on Truth Social, attacking Nikki Haley, who is the daughter of Indian immigrants. Writing, anyone listening to Nikki Nimrata Haley's whacked out speech last night would think that she won the Iowa primary, misspelling Haley's birth name, Nimrata. Trump also posting this picture, mixing Haley's photo with Hillary Clinton. Nikki Haley, in particular, <laughs> is counting on the Democrats and liberals to infiltrate your Republican primary. Trump has often resorted to race and gender-based attacks on Haley. <laughs> These aggressive campaign tactics have been a staple of Trump's political brand since he ran for president in 2016. During that primary campaign, he repeatedly accused Ted Cruz of being ineligible for the Oval Office because he was born on Canadian soil. Now, years later, as the battle for New Hampshire tightens just days before polls open, Trump's attacks going personal yet again. Well, before he headed to New Hampshire, the former president was in New York for his court case. For that details, uh, let's go to Nicola Sinivratna standing by in New York. Nicola? Yes, Mahesh. A federal judge warned Donald Trump yesterday he could be kicked out of Winter E. Jean Carroll's defamation trial if he kept making disparaging comments that the jury could hear. U.S. District Judge 
Louis Copeland's threat came after a lawyer for Carroll said Trump was talking loudly with his lawyers during testimony by Carroll, who said the president lied by denying in 2019 that he had raped her decades earlier. Carroll, an LA Magazine advice columnist for 27 years, testified that the former U.S. president destroyed her reputation and is seeking at least $10 million in damages. The latest trial has become a focal point of Trump's 2024 White House run, with Trump using his truth social platform to unleash criticism of Carroll and the trial judge, even after jury selection and the trial began. Back to you, Mahesh. All right, Nicholas and Nibiratna, the Dharanam World News Special Correspondent reporting from New York, USA. Well, the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration announced that inspections of an initial group of 40 Boeing 737 MAX 9 planes have been completed. It is a key hurdle to eventually under ungrounding uh, the planes after a January 5th incident in which a cabin panel broke off in mid-flight on a new Alaska airline jet. With the MAX 9 fleet grounded, forcing United and Alaska Airlines to cancel hundreds of flights each day, the FAA said today it's now reviewing data from the first 40 MAX 9 inspections before inspecting the rest of the grounded fleet. Underscoring the loss of airline trust in Boeing, Alaska Airlines is now sending its own inspectors to Boeing plants. Adding more experienced professionals to the teams that validate work and quality on the production line for the 737. The production line is where Boeing's reputation is on the line, five years after two fatal MAX 8 crashes overseas. The MAX 9 fuselage is made by Spirit Aerosystems, which has struggled with quality control for years. The FAA is now investigating both Boeing and Spirit production practices. Boeing CEO David Calhoun told Spirit employees today, we're going to learn from it and then we're going to apply it to literally everything else we do. As the NTSB lab in Washington analyzes the critical evidence, the door plug that exploded was supposed to cover an unused emergency exit secured with four bolts. The NTSB says it was made at a spirit plant in Malaysia. The question is whether bolts were ever attached. Alaska and United Airlines say they've since found loose bolts on other grounded MAX 9s. There's a horrific story to report to you coming out from Africa today. Kenya's top prosecutor ordered that 95 people from a doomsday cult be charged with murder, cruelty, child torture and other crimes in the deaths of 429 people believed to be members of a church. The country's director of public prosecutions was responding to pressure from a magistrate in the coastal county of Kilifi who told the prosecution to charge the suspects within two weeks or the court would release them. Dozens of accused doomsday cult members in Kenya appearing in court on Wednesday, facing charges of murder, cruelty and child torture. It is the start of a legal process in an investigation centered on the cult's leader, a self-described pastor named Paul McKenzie. Prosecutors say McKenzie's so-called Good News International Church was anything but. In April of 2023, investigators discovered a horrific scene in Kenya's remote Shakahola forest. Hundreds of bodies unearthed from shallow graves. <laughs> Among the dead, nearly 200 children, with autopsies finding that some died from starvation while others were strangled or suffocated. Those who did survive were found in critical condition. Now, prosecutors point to McKinsey as the central figure in their investigation. They say he convinced his followers to abandon their lives and retreat to the forest under the pretense of preparing for the apocalypse, then letting them starve to death as a path to religious salvation. McKinsey's defense says he is cooperating with the investigation and denies the allegations against him. Let's take a short commercial break of watching the world news. Welcome back everyone to World News. Now the FBI is sounding the alarm over a growing threat of sextortion involving minors from around the world. 
The FBI is telling law enforcement authorities around the globe that in recent times the ring has managed to gain traction while operating from overseas. A college-bound track star, 17-year-old James Woods, had just gotten his driver's license and posed for his senior yearbook photo. They always said he had a beautiful smile, which he did. When his mother, Tamia Woods, says an online predator targeted James on Instagram. The FBI calls it financial sextortion. That any child can be a victim of this crime. Minors coerced by criminals, often working together overseas, into sharing compromised images of themselves. This is a predator that is solely interested in financial gain. Children as young as nine years old told to send money or the photos will be posted online. From October 2021 through March 2023, the FBI has tracked roughly 12,600 sextortion victims, all of them minors. Since 2021, at least 20 kids have died by suicide, including Woods' son, James. The most horrible phone call I've ever received. The Woods family shattering the stigma. You know, he was my only child. And so I have to live through my memories. And that's all I have now are memories. By sharing their story. Well, Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, will face criminal tax proceedings after failing to declare an item upon arrival in Germany. According to Munich Customs, the action star did not declare a product, a product that was imported from non-EU countries in order to remain in the EU. Later, the former California governor and movie star was released and traveled on uh, after being held for more than two hours. When he left, he said, I'll be back. Now, we've all had a good bowl, bowl of noodles uh, when we uh, visit a good restaurant, but have you had flying noodles? A man in Berlin seems to have cracked the code on flying ramen. There are hundreds of different ramen all over the world. Miso ramen, shoyu ramen, ramyeon ramen, sukumen ramen, and many, many more. But this is flying ramen. But why does it fly? Meet Christopher, proprietor of one of the most unique ramen joints in Berlin. He's mastering the Japanese craft of ramen from the comfort of his flat. In 2006, Christopher traveled to Japan as a student and got his first taste of authentic Japanese ramen. It was really like I imagined it to be extremely flavorful and surprising at the same time, which yeah, kind of impressed me so much that I yeah, always dreamt of, of cooking ramen myself. Obsessed with all things Japanese cuisine, Christopher spent the next 20 years eating, cooking, and developing his own ramen recipes. Because I had like a social media account, Instagram account, for which I documented how I cooked Japanese style and often experimented with different ramen uh, recipes, documenting how I was cooking each component and how it tasted. Then in 2020, COVID hit the world. I couldn't work in my, my main job, so I had a lot of time and people were asking me whether they could have a taste of my ramen. And since I'm living in the second floor and uh, I didn't want anyone to walk through our building, I had the idea of using a red bucket uh, to lower it uh, from my living room to the customers uh, waiting downstairs at the pavement. The inspiration for the red bucket actually came from a very famous ramen shop in Fukuoka, Japan, who uses a blue bucket as a sign outside of the door to show whenever it's out, the ramen shop is open. The bucket is red since I wanted to buy a blue one, but the shop nearby only had a red one, so... <laughs> <That's simple. laughs> yeah. I cannot imagine getting bored of ramen. There are so many new varieties I don't know about yet even, and so many new techniques I could learn. And ramen is a, such a simple dish, but using those techniques to make those different components a little bit better makes the whole thing um, that exciting. After watching that, I need noodles for dinner now. Let's call home. And that is a part of your world tonight. Thank you very much for joining us on this Thursday night. We'll return tomorrow at the same time with another edition of World News. See you then. Bye for now. Bye.